My topic, training Irish craft workers in Germany. Um, who we are, um, we are a non-profit organization and we provide training to carpenter apprentices, mainly in southwest Germany, Baden-Württemberg. Um, apprenticeship in Germany for a carpenter, you have a, a contract with a company for three years. First year, you go to school full time. Second and third year, you work for the company. From time to time, you go back to school, or dual system. Um, not every carpenter is, or some of the, most of the carpenters are specialized in a certain field. They might do carports, they might do roofs, they might do prefab houses. Um, but the apprentices have to learn a wider field than that. So what they have to do is, from time to time, they have to send them to our institute, uh, where we have 14, 16 workshops, 30 master crafts, and then um, where we teach them more or less the basics, how to use a hand saw, a chisel, circular saw, a band saw, whatsoever. Coming from that, we just offered vocational training as well. So a foreman, side foreman, a master of the trade, what we still have since the Middle Ages. Um, so last year we had, we offered 75 courses in our training center uh, with more than 960 participants. So that's where we're coming from. What we also do is Leonardo da Vinci mobility programs. That's a European funding, um, spending money on people saying, well, we have a group of professionals here. We want to send them over to somewhere else. Um, and the receiving partner should tell them something about this topic or that topic. So it could be any topic really could be any group of professionals. Uh, we're certainly focusing on um, timber frame houses, um, sustainable buildings. Uh, we're doing this since 2009 with the LIT, um, with the CIT, with the ITB, and a partner from Belfast as well. Um, here we're going to concentrate on the CESPAM program, stands for Competence Enhancement and Sustainable Building for European mobility. So this course is aimed at carpenters, but also for engineers and architects. Um, unfortunately, these programs are coming to an end this year. There's no European funding anymore for PLM, people in the labor market. All the funding goes now more to the apprentice. The PLM part had been always a small part only. Um, so by the end of the year, we'll have um, in summary, 750 people trained in our institute, coming mainly here from Ireland and a very small part from North Ireland. Um, we also offered the Heat Plus program aimed at plumbers. Um, after two groups, we just figured out the feedback is not as good as it had been with the carpenters, so we skipped that, um, passed it on to a competence center in uh, Münster. They do plumbing there, and I guess feedback there is also quite good. The main idea about these programs in, within Leonardo da Vinci is to get people to a different country so they can see what are the differences. What do they do different in this country? So we're not offering an Irish course. We're not telling them you know, what you should do here in Ireland. We just tell them what we do in Germany. So lessons we've learned since we do these courses. Um, if you look at buildings, in the old times, this building from 1600 something, this one, I don't know how old it is. Could be a couple of hundred years, don't know. Um, people used local materials they had around. They didn't import the marble from Italy and the tiles from Spain and whatever. They just used the local stuff around. So if there was timber, if there was bricks, they used them. If they used clay, it had been around. So transport was very um, expensive, so they used local materials to withstand the local weather conditions. For some reason, there's not much timber in old buildings here, as far as I can see that. Um, there might be a reason for that. I don't know which one. It might be the weather. It might be the lack of timber. You might have used it all for your ships. I don't know. Um, you can see, for example, in North Germany, hardly any timber buildings are there. More timber buildings in the south, where all the big forests are. In the north, there had been some forests. They just used them for the ships, so couldn't use them for building materials. That's a model we just have in our 
Institute. I um, want to just show the Irish around. Uh, we always discuss that one. Also, um, what you see here is the roller shutter, very typical. So you just grew up in a house, and once you build your own house, you just sort of match that. You, know, you, you get more, more modernized, you just, but you still have what you're used to. And that's the same thing happens here as well. So building a house is always culture related. That's what I keep saying, that's what I keep telling the participants. The roller shutters, for example, you just sort of have to have them. You just grow up with them, and soon you build your own house, you have to have them. Most participants are asking me, don't you have curtains? Yes, we have curtains, but we don't trust them, really. Okay, we just want to close it on the outside. Benefit is you just protect your windows a little bit, at least at night time, against rain, wind, whatsoever. Um, some people think it's good protection against burglars. They're not because it's just plastic. Um, in summertime, you just block the sun so your house doesn't heat up as much. So. People love them, people want to have them. That's the way it is. Where you grew up with curtains and you're fine with it. So that's a cultural difference, definitely. But that comes into the construction because how to combine that roller shutter into your construction, how to seal it off and so on. So we have to think about that where you don't have any problems because you just have to curtain on the inside. The build up of a wall, for example, that's something we had to learn as lecturers in Germany. Um, typical build-up on the top left, um, Irish construction, your cavity. People in Ireland seem to love their cavity because most carpenters and most craftsmen we have are afraid of driven rain. Uh, in the first floors we had, we had these beautiful, perfect solutions, put them up there and people stood up and said, doesn't work in Ireland because you've got horizontal rain. In Germany, there's a standard, the rain comes down on 30 degrees. <laughs> Still wondering if anyone told the rain already, but that's the standard. So, no horizontal rain. So we had to rethink our, about our own constructions, presenting to these carpenters and architects and engineers, and say, well, okay, that might not work in your weather conditions. Um, cavity wall, nowadays, insulation in between, because of the driven rain at the bottom, rather typical um, German construction when it comes to um, masonry walls. Um, insulation on the outside, usually EPS, and then a very slim render, just five mil, um, which is hardly known here. You just have your two centimeters of plaster on the outside, and that's it. There are at least one company around here in Ireland, they do this retrofitting with EPS on the outside, five mil render on the outside as well. And they have problems to find plasterers that could do that job. Different culture, different constructions. Um, also different here, German building site, you have to have a basement. You grew up, you have a basement, your washing machine is downstairs, your tumble dryer, storage of groceries, your freezer, it's all downstairs. Um, I didn't even know where to put it if I don't have a basement. So you have it somewhere else. Unthinkable for me. It costs a fortune to dig that out, to get the cellar, the basement in there, but you have to have it. So we have different, um, a cu different culture here. Um, that's the road in Ireland, I think somewhere, County Tipperary. Um, hardly any overhang, double chimneys. For what reason ever, I don't know. That's something I don't see in Germany. I think it had been in, in a couple of hundred years ago. I had so many chimneys, you were rather rich because you could, avoid, you could afford a fireplace in every room. So you had eight chimneys on the top. Okay, some, for some reason, you sort of keep it and say, well, still two chimneys up there, not just one. So we have different cultures, background cultures. And that's influencing, um, influencing our construction. That's also having an influence on our craftsmen. Carper, carpenter in Germany, the apprentice, for example, they learn something about the framing. The same here. Roofing, that's only, only a small part of what we learn. Um, because a roofer is an old, jo known, 
specialist um, as an apprenticeship for roofers. So we'll just learn three years how to put on the roof onto the house. Um, so the carpenters learn only a tiny little bit of that. Um, roofing here seems to be bigger as, long, as far as I have been told. <laughs> um, second fixing, skirting, handrails, that's done by a carpenter slash joiner here. A carpenter in Germany never does that, that's just a cabinet maker joiner. So we have differences in the trades. So comparing a German carpenter with an Irish carpenter doesn't work because they might do slightly different work on the building side. They might have different knowledge. Um, the formwork is part here as well. Um, formwork for us only briefly. The doors, internal, external, to build them, that's done here by the carpenters. For us, nope, that's a job for the joiner, for the cabinet maker. Kitchens, unheard of in Germany for a carpenter. Shop fittings, the same. Staircase, I've been told just five minutes ago. Staircase, you do. Sorry for that little line here, so ignore that. Um, it's part of the apprenticeship, your face, your seven phases. Um, the refurbishment. Here is not done for us, it's done, and the air tightness is a big issue for us as well. So, yeah, it's hard to compare, as I said, the crafts directly to each other. Um, so therefore, a carpenter in general in Germany, they have a deeper understanding of the building physics. What is around, what's the background about it? Why do I build this way and not the other way? As I said, we just train a thousand Apprentice each year in our training center, we tell them about the U value calculation, how to calculate that. Um, they learn something about the dew point. So they understand if I just have a very airtight or very diffusible tight member on the, in, on the outside, I just get a dew point <coughs> inside my calculation um, that will cause problems. And that's a big difference we just learned when we had the Irish carpenters, even engineers and architects. Um, some part of our course we give is building physics to understand the SD value, how to calculate the dew point inside a wall, which is very easy to do, but even most engineers don't know how to do that. They just rely on the suppliers, just give them a call and say, well, just, could you just you know, calculate that for me? Does it work or doesn't it work? Um, in our point of view, that knowledge should be with the guy on the billing side, even. Because if he just puts the materials in the wrong way together, for what reason ever, um, he might cause problems there. Um, we teach our apprentices about diffusibility of materials, so you know what is very diffusible, which is, not, which is more tight. Um, in which order do we have to put them onto the roof, into the wall, whatsoever. Um, the air tightness. Um, for the last 10 years, um, the air tight level we have to achieve is three. Three times the whole volume the house is allowed to leave through uncontrolled gaps. Um, here it's still seven, I've been told, this morning. And you still have your four inch holes in your walls as a requirement then I don't have to think about air tightness. If I still have these big holes in the wall, um, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But again, it's culture. It's coming from somewhere. There's a reason why you have this requirement. Yeah. Um, you don't have power plugs in your bathrooms. We have culture differences. Um, so if you have a requirement coming either from your culture, from your own, or, or your government saying, okay, that's the level, that's what you have to achieve, people start to think about that. If your level is too low, seven plus four inch holds, you don't have to think about the air tightness really. So you don't have to make a proper job there because it's sort of going through that hole anyway. So um, I think we have 
carbon does have a big understanding, awareness of the importance of the air tightness. Um, the biggest enemy for a timber frame house in Germany is the electrician and the plumber because they just drill the holes and make cuttings inside your airtight levels without knowing that this is the airtight level, really. So um, there's still some training needed there, I guess. Um, we have special workshops where we train our apprentices to fix different members, membranes to each other or to different materials onto a wall, timber frame, and to uh, plasterboard whatsoever. So what they could use on different materials at what spot. So um, they know what to do on the building side. So in the end, um, the different climates we have, they lead to different building cultures, different construction detailings, definitely. Um, the different building requirements we have, coming from a cultural background, they lead to different levels of knowledge. Um, and when we develop training materials on European level, we've done that in a European program um, called Train Energy. Um, the biggest problems we had were to find, you know, what, what level do we start with? We start with um, some materials that might be boring to one part of Europe because they know all about it and then might be already nearly too much for the others because they haven't heard about that a lot yet. So, um, yeah, so I was rather pleased when I saw the roadmaps a couple of years ago and the European Union decided to make that a national roadmap. And I thought that was a brilliant idea because then you don't have to get along with these problems developing materials that are equalized all over Europe. That, in my opinion, doesn't work unless you just focus on the very, very basics. But then again, you just have different knowledge of levels, uh, levels of knowledge uh, in different countries. So it might be known in one country already and brand new to the other one. Right, so that was quick. <laughs> Thanks for your attention.